So we're all the way through the process. We've gone from quad one to quad two to quad three to quad four. We have our loan estimate at the beginning of the process. We have our closing disclosure at the end of the process. Okay, so now we're at the closing table. Your loan officer may or may not be there. Uh, your realtor may or may not be there. I attend most of my closings that I can. Uh, your realtor may or may not be there. Um, the attorney will be there. Your attorney will be there. Uh, the, the seller's attorney uh, very likely will be there. Uh, the listing agent, the person who's selling the property, uh, may or may not be there. And then the seller um, usually isn't there either. Um, so in certain states, you the signing date and the closing date are not the same date. Okay, in California, for example, they're super cash about that. The signing date and the closing date are, you know, to two totally different things. Uh, in Illinois and some of the surrounding states, Indiana, uh, Iowa, Michigan, Wisconsin, etc., a lot of states are like this too. The signing date and the closing date are the same date. And in Illinois, we use title companies. In the Chicago market, we use title companies. Some other places use um, use just an attorney's office as an escrow agent, um, and they're designated as an escrow agent. Um, but they're interchangeable. It's where you close. Whoever's refereeing the transaction, that's the escrow agent or the title company. All right, so you're at the closing table, and you've got your knuckles cracked, and you get your pen, and the buyer's attorney, your, your attorney, is gonna go through this huge stack you know, huge stack of papers that the lender has sent over called the closing package. And the closing package is basically all of the things that need to be signed. Now, what you need to know is this. Every single thing that's in a closing package is there because there was some litigation of somebody, someplace, lost money, a deal blew up because they didn't have this disclosure signed or somebody got upset and sued somebody else so that this disclosure, this disclosure got created. Every single thing that's in the package, the way that they do it, uh, every single thing, the way that you sign, everything matters, everything impacts, and you have to sign everything. <laughs> so when you're there, get ready to sign documents. You're gonna sign the original uh, application, what's called a 1003. You're gonna sign, uh, you're gonna sign your closing disclosure, you're gonna sign um, acknowledgements that you've received information, acknowledgements that the sellers disclosed everything, acknowledgements that there might be affiliated business arrangements, like some people at the table might be earning money from some other place. That's also at the table. You're gonna sign a uh, thing that says, hey, I know that that's a possibility. Um, you're gonna sign things that may actually not be the case. For example, uh, if the mortgage company owns an insurance, is it the same company that owns the mortgage company also owns an insurance company, you're gonna to have to sign a, a disclosure that says, hey, I know that you know that uh, the mortgage company owns this other uh, insurance company, um, even you know whether or not you got the insurance from that company or not. There's a lot of disclosures. You need to bring your ID, you need to bring the cashier's check made out to the title company or the escrow agent, not to the lender, not to the lender, not to the lender, uh, but to the title company and to the escrow agent. And then there's an escrow officer that's in there. Um, and They'll be communicating with the closing department at the lender's uh, office someplace else, usually not even in the state. And they're gonna be sending the documents that you're signing. They're gonna keep, keep track of everything. Um, now, let's stop here for a second. Before you start to do these documents, you're gonna do a final walkthrough with your uh, agent. And the final walkthrough is really meant to make sure that the condition that you saw the property in last is the same condition that you're buying it in. So if you bought the property and it was really, really nice and then the sellers like had this massive party and destroyed it all, if you didn't do the final walkthrough, well, you wouldn't know. You'd be signing documents and be, you know, acquiring a property that was jacked. So you do a final walkthrough to make sure that everything's, um, you know, okay. It looks like it was. A lot of times, the final walkthrough will uncover things at the last minute, and such as like if there was a painting on the wall, and the painting is now gone because the sellers have moved out, but there was like a stinking hole in the wall that the painting was covered up, covering up, and you didn't know then you know you might have a problem at the closing table you might be like well i don't well they should fix the hole shouldn't they i mean like i don't want to fix the hole i don't want to put a painting up there necessarily like have them fix it 
it, there's done, there's done, done, and there's done, 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 you know, when it comes to buying a, a property, whether it's a single family home or a condo. And your final walkthrough, there could be final negotiations. And if the negotiations are big enough, then some of those documents, if those documents that are in that closing package that I mentioned earlier, if those documents meaningfully change, if there's a legal change to the closing package or to any of the documents, namely the closing disclosure, okay, you could have a, a huge issue and ultimately your, your closing could get delayed and through no fault of your own necessarily. Um, because you want, you know, people might, might, might want things that are on the record and on the CD. You might want the, the closing disclosure to change to reflect a, a bigger seller credit. You might have an impact that might change the numbers meaningfully. If any of those, those numbers that matter to the, to the regulators, if those things meaningfully change, you might be mandated to take an extra three days to reevaluate the, the CD. You can't waive the three day CD, three day CD rule. Can't, can't waive it. Uh, it's gotta happen. So everybody at the table is going to be incentivized to, to make sure that everything falls uh, into place and that everybody's that everybody is uh, a okay with what's happening. But have I been at closings where the the buyer and the buyer's attorney and the seller and the seller's attorney or the seller selling attorney calling the the seller uh, negotiating at the table because there's an issue multiple times? I mean, it absolutely happens. Um, so that's the last piece of it. So anyway, that's the closing table in the next video. We'll wrap things up.